It's February 16th. We're in the desert. Rampas in Humanas. Thermo nuclear attacks already in the season. Tour of Oman stage five. Now, yesterday, Ulysses won the sprint. None of the GC guys, apart from Ulysses, took bonus seconds. That brought him within five seconds of Jorgensen, who had this to say before stage five. I feel good, confident, uh, slept well, and yeah, no, it should be a, a beautiful day. I just excited to test myself. That's really all it is. I hope to win. Uh, I hope to at least be in the leader's jersey, and um, yeah, I'm confident. So he's in the leader's jersey after his win on stage three. The finish is the famous Jabal al Akhtar Green Mountain, 5.7 Ks, 10.5%. The last two Ks, though, are crazy steep. Jan Hit launched it last year to win GC. Rafael Valls has the climbing record, 18.28 or something. Froome's also, I think he had the second quickest time. Breakaway went. So could Jorgensen and Movistar defend? Astana were pacing for Luchenko, who hadn't been as competitive on the punchy stages. So on this long climb, even though he's won GC here before, I was surprised they were pacing. Anyway, maybe they weren't for intermediate bonus seconds. I was watching on the stream last night. But here's the climb. You remember this last year. It was Tom DeVrint, but here is Busato, who's on their dev team, Antemarche. The Antemarche train launched it from the base again, which is key for high-level climbing performances or doing the fastest time. Is Someone's got to pace from the bottom. Uh, especially in the shallower slopes of Jabal al Akhtar, and then Menkes took over. So Antimarche got the guy who won from the break, Menkes, in Vuelta Espana last year on Les Prairies, one of the steepest finishes of the year. And he's pacing for Tarame. You got Lushenko third wheel, Gonzalo's fourth wheel, Jorgensen leaders jersey red for Movistar, then Maxim van Hills in like fourth on 12 seconds or something, Christian Rodriguez for Arkea, Ota Brooks and Buchmann for Bora Hans and Maori on five seconds, probably the biggest threat to Mateo in the white young riders jersey. So they're all there. Verona's just off the back as well for Movistar. But from here on out, I mean, Gonzalo has been really good this week. And Ulysses was in the sprint jersey. Sorry, he paced the climb really well. He didn't try and follow. He did his own pace and actually finished under a minute down. But Tarame launches and he would just pace at like 450, 460 watts, dropping Luchenko and gradually dropping everyone one by one off his wheel. Now, it didn't eventually help him win the stage, but... Damn, these guys went fast today, like 6.7 watts per kilo for the first two guys for 18 minutes is super fast. I know it's February. I know it's, you know, it was an easy stage beforehand, but I I didn't think, I mean, Jorgensen, Van Seven on Bouchard, I mean, everyone's setting their PBs here in, into the final K, and this is going to be a long final K, so I'm going to ramble a little bit, but they all set their best, I think, power numbers on this stage, certainly in a race. And this makes me look at Jorgensen in a whole different light because he's bigger than all these guys. He's 190 centimetres, although that's not as big of a benefit as being 189 with the TT rule changes as Bouchard attacks and then that drops Tarame, who's sort of gone for the rest of the stage. But yeah, Jorgensen's out of contract, 190 centimetres, American, marketable, like personable in interviews. He's got big watts and he's climbing like this on steep gradients ahead of Bouchard and Maori who are, you know, just a tick over 60 kilos. The TT, you got to wonder, why isn't as good as Aaronsman? And I think if you put this guy on, other teams are probably looking like if we, you know, Ineos or whoever, if we put him on our TT setup, I think we can get him going pretty fast in the TT and we got ourselves a real GC contender on our hands. Now, this is a completely different climbing experience to multiple long climbs and, you know, a lot of workload before the final climb, but still he's shown the capacity here to do a really high level climbing performance, which is kind of what you need to see in cycling nowadays. And Van Seven on, I mean, this is how steep it is. They're doing like 20% rounds. So that was an attack on the right-hand side from Maori, and they're all side by side, and it levels off. It looks flat, but they're still on like 7 8% here in the last 400 meters. Maori hits him again. He's only got – only. He has to win the stage and put a second or more into Jorgensen, and that could happen in just the final couple of hundred meters. And Maori's another one I'd like to talk about. Like, he is he just going to be a climbing domestique for Remco? He's it was better than Jan Hurt on this whole tour of Oman, that's for sure. Are they going to use him in the Arden Classics? Probably all of the above, but he's out of contract too. Bouchard, though, he finished 12 seconds down on these guys eventually. He's been getting better and better in these uh, Middle Eastern races. He's ninth in UAE last year, but Maori makes the same mistake again as he did on stage three, not getting on the most dangerous man's wheel, and he loses GC possibly right at this moment. 
where Mateo goes to the other side of Bouchard and now Maori's boxed in. And I know boxed in on like a 20% gradient, kind of paradoxical, but he's still, watch Maori now. He can't react immediately to Jorgensen. And I think that costs him something. It costs him some fraction of a second. He has to pause and wait for Bouchard to go, and then he kicks out. Now, maybe that meant that Jorgensen went too early and sort of perished on his run. I don't know. I think it would have been a lot closer, this GC battle, if Van Sevenant was on Jorgensen's wheel. But he wasn't. He's able to come around him just at the end. And if he drops him by more than a second, he would have taken the GC lead. But he isn't able to. Sets, they all set. A new record, a Bregval's record on Green Mountain Van Sevenant. Count it from the back wheel, Luke told me. Back wheel to Jorgensen's front wheel was less than a second. So Jorgensen gets the same time as Van Sevenant, just keeps the GC lead. Van Sevenant's pumped, but it was hot conditions, I think like 35 degrees. He should be happy about that performance. And Jorgensen, about his whole week, frankly, the punchy stages, that climbing performance and winning GC, impressive stuff from all of them. One second ahead of Van Sevenot, 28 seconds ahead of Bouchard, a nice result for him. Here's what Jorgensen had to say after the stage. Two days ago, I got my first professional win, and now to win the GC at a race like this, where guys in the past, yeah, the previous winners are crazier. So, I, yeah, I'm just Mati. so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> Matthias, bro! But go and see the article linked down below. I didn't think they'd go below 19 minutes on Green Mountain. It's really impressive how quick they went when you look at the sort of previous winners and the, the record holders on Green Mountain. So I'm hoping Jungsen and Van Seven on they kick on for the rest of this year. I'll be watching them closely. But until the Andalusia video later today, ciao.